Dear Mr. Roberts, dude, we know you can do this. Thank you for taking this on. This could be the dark night of video game movies. Finally a good one. Um, and I was so glad to hear about how utterly invested you are as a fan in this, this story. So from the fans to you, uh, we got your back and thank you for taking this on. I know you don't need advice from someone outside of the industry, um, but I just thought it might be a good idea to throw some things out there that um, could go amiss while you while you deal with the stress of getting such a huge project off the ground. As your brother and beard, not quite as long, unfortunately, here are a few things that the Metal Gear Solid movie might benefit from. Number one, find an actual real life location. Look at Mad Max, look at Interstellar. Location beats green screen CGI any day. There has to be an old snowy atmospheric abandoned mine or something out there. It will be as important a character as the actors will be. Shadow Moses please, not CGI Moses. Number two, cringe reduction. Some things will just not translate well from the game to the big screen, we all know that. We need a huge reduction in exposition. It's endearing in the game when Snake replies quizzically to every statement that he is presented with, but on the big screen, this would be a spoon-feeding disaster. On a similar note, many things can get lost in translation whilst adapting source material. And I've been thinking, maybe we should call Solid Snake, Snake? And Sniper Wolf, Wolf? Etc. Marvel have done a great job of owning or openly lamenting superhero names on screen. We need to do something similar here. Snake vs. Liquid was an awesome concept in a 1998 video game, but for today's uninitiated audience it would be incredibly heavy-handed, I think you can agree. And finally in this cringe section, be careful with Psychomantis if you decide to use him. Gas masks and floating figures conjure up images of a sort of faded, new metal aesthetic from times past. In today's world, his character would need to be updated significantly in many ways, including his visual state and the state of his dialogue. Number three, acknowledge the game world. Not a great movie by any means, but do you remember Doom uh, starring The Rock and uh, how they, for one section of the movie, went to first person, so it was exactly like the video game, but in the movie that was pretty awesome. Well, imagine what it might be like to film a one-take action scene in the Metal Gear movie from the third person, following Snake. When he leans against the wall, the camera zooms in without cutting to show us that oh so familiar combat view. Some of these mechanics could be executed to spectacular ends. Could the codex screen appear on the cinema screen? Number four, and one of my favorites here, emphasis on practical effects. That's not to say throw away CGI effects obviously, but just emphasis on practical effects if possible. Hear me out for a sec. Somewhat related to my first point here, you are awesome at what you do with CGI, it's spectacular in King Kong, but my god, are we, the cinema going public, sick to death of unnecessarily bland, lifeless CGI bombardment? It might be a quick fix, well, a long fix depending on how much you're animating, or a common fix, but it's often shallow and rarely age as well. If you built a large 1 to 1 tenth, 100th animatronic Rex, you would really grab attention. Sure, combine it with CGI, but give us the sense of real weight the real texture of factory steel. This game is called Metal Gear after all. Similarly, Grey Fox, please do not put a real face on a CGI body. He needs to feel heavy. His footsteps need to sound like steel and steel, dangerous and intentional, somewhat like the original Robocop, but more dexterous, I guess. How about you go fuck yourself, Alarm? We know this can be achieved. Look at what this cosplayer has done already. Number five. John Wick CQC. Okay, another thing audiences are utterly sick of is shaky cam, multi-cut action slash fight scenes. It is quite clear that some of the most exciting on-screen combat scenes in years have been on show in the John Wick series. And this so obviously parallels Kojima's action sensibilities and Snake's fighting style that it would be a pure shame not to make the fight scenes choreography slash stuntman heavy. Real drama, real stakes, real art, without cutting away. Give the audience time to take in the action. We can do that. We don't need constant shaky cam, constant cuts, constant manufactured excitement. Put it into the choreography, please. Number six, the artistic approach. I ask you to hold two things in your mind's eye. On the one hand, we have scenes like Merle being ambushed by Sniper Wolf to bait Snake, as well as Grey Fox stalking Snake, banging his skull against the ground, and surprise showing up at the end to sacrifice himself and deliver that speech. And on the other hand, I ask you to think about dramatic movies that matter. There Will Be Blood, The Revenant, Yadorowski's Stalker, 2001 A Space Odyssey. In both cases, there is pure art, visceral emotion, and dynamism on show. We need you to merge these two things. Leave out of the movie what won't translate well from the game. 
Elevate and exploit what will. Please, don't be afraid to get dark, moody, and surreal. Number seven, betray your audience, betray the status quo. Continuing on from the last point, don't be afraid to get surreal. Metal Gear continuously breaks the fourth wall. How can we do this with the movie? Suggestion number one, don't ape Deadpool. Suggestion number two, start at the beginning. What does it mean to have people in a room watching a movie? How do we get them to look at the code on the back of the CD case, if you know what I mean? Could one scene inexplicably play twice as the characters get closer to Psycho Mantis's office, making the audience go, whoa, did the film just skip there? As if Psycho Mantis fucked with the projector. Just don't be afraid to get arty and indie on this big budget feast. Give us something that shakes people up, that will be talked about for years. Never mind a bad or disappointing movie, better to have an outright unforgettably strange surreal movie than even a middling, mediocre one. Take risks with that studio money, if you can, please. <laughs> Number eight, cast. Probably the most talked about aspect in this film's pre-production history. This is tricky. I'm not even going to attempt to do a rundown here, but a few choices though they may seem odd and left field at first, have me pretty excited. Ocelot. Devious, stern, dramatic. I know he doesn't look much like Ocelot, but for a second try and imagine Michael Rooker in the coat. He has the grit, the gravitas, the delivery. He could be amazing. He's got to carry all that menace and motivation. The man is a torturer and combat weary. Look at that face. Secondly, if you do a psychomantis, get a method actor. We need a madman for this role. Someone who can inhabit the bondage literally and metaphorically. And finally, two asides. Bill Hader as Otacon, and this girl from Guardians of the Galaxy as Mei Ling. It's basically her. Number nine, betray your audience, but not too much. I think one of the most important things to take on board before anything else here is that original atmosphere. Remember how mesmerizing this game felt when you first played it, way before we had all these successive installments, when we first entered that snow-swept, dark landscape. Who are these people? What is a Metal Gear? Oh. As a side point, it'd be pretty funny if there was a scene where someone asks Snake, why is it called Metal Gear? And he replies, it's metal and has gears. Anyway, where was I? If you forget about Hollywood expectation and somehow translated the essence of Metal Gear Solid, we would all be so lucky. But of course, don't feel obligated to recreate a scene unless it's cinematically exciting only. On that note, we all know what happens in the game. The hallway of dead bodies, Grey Fox getting crushed, Please, please push for an OR rating. Logan did it well, so can Metal Gear Solid. Number 10, finally, don't give away the whole movie in the trailer. Trailer 1, trailer 2, just make the trailers awesome, touch on it. You don't gotta give us the whole movie in the trailer. Okay, if you somehow made it through all that, thank you. Thank you for listening, thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the rambles of an obsessive fan. An obsessive fan of both cinema and Metal Gear. If any morsel of this resonates with you, please feel free to take it all. Like you, I just want the most ambitious, the most stylish, the most action-packed, the most emotionally resonant movie to come out of this as possible. From us, the fans, to you, Mr. Roberts, thank you and good luck. And if you ever want someone to bounce ideas off, just DM me. Thanks, I'm sure you'll take the time out of writing that script and doing all that incredibly stressful work to do that, but anyway, yes. I'm just excited about this movie. The game franchise was kind of life-changing for me. Anyway, bye. <laughs>